Welcome all. In this episode of Retro Gaming Nation, we take a quick look through all the entrants to this year's RGCD 16KB cartridge competition for the C64, which sees established and aspiring developers test their programming skills by producing quality C64 game titles within the confines of a 16KB size limitation. So let's get straight into the submissions. Bustopia DX is a fast-paced horizontal shooter featuring eight levels of alien blasting action and a great atmospheric soundtrack. Your mission is to battle against a complete fleet of assorted aliens, accumulating points and collecting camels that are dropped from destroyed alien ships. Once you've collected your quota of camels, you're free to land and move on to the next level. Blastopia DX is a solid blaster game, featuring somewhat sophisticated enemy waves and challenging gameplay. But there is nothing here that makes it stand out really, and the game pales in comparison to some of the other shooters submitted to the competition. Death Weapon is a single screen arena based shooter where you are given a quota of aliens to destroy before the allocated time runs out, before then being allowed to move on to the next level. The game graphics are quite good and the ships move around the screen quite well. The arena based format makes the game a bit more interesting than Sturk or XD, the other submission from the same developer, in that the gamer is provided with a challenge of some sort. But besides the different game backdrops and the increased quota requirements, there really isn't much different to see in later levels. It's hard not to be dismissive of Die Skater, as its basic description states that you skate around on the die and colour the dots on all six sides. Give the game a try and what you'll find is a highly addictive semi-puzzle type game featuring very good die rotation and engaging gameplay as you try to obtain optimum control of your sliding skater to cover all dots on the die. The game excels when the timer is quickly ticking down and you're trying to locate the side of the die you have not visited yet. This is a great example of game design being executed very well to provide a very good game experience. Doc Cosmos is a flick screen platform game where you control Doc Cosmos on the search for a powerful alien device that is rumoured to be able to allow the user to time travel. Doc arrives on the alien planet to begin his quest to obtain the device but soon gets stuck in the underground complex and it's up to you to go around collecting keys and unlocking doors in order to get Doc back to his ship. We gave the game the full review treatment a few months back and enjoyed the game's main gimmick, the concept of an alternate timeline which Doc can switch in and out of to solve various game puzzles and allow further progression into the game. We found the game to play very well and the transition between the two timelines is seamless. Not only is Doc Cosmos one of the strongest titles in this competition, it quite possibly is one of the best games for 2019. Ice Cold Beer is a digital interpretation of a mechanical arcade game where you tilt the bar back and forth to nudge a ball into a lit hole, while avoiding the others. When the ball is deposited, the ball and the bar return to the bottom of the playfield and the next target lights up. While a simple game in its premise, it is fun in short bursts. You can use two joysticks to control the left and right side of the bars, but most of us will stick to using the keyboard controls. Lala La Prologue is a flick screen platform game port of the Mohan Twins original title for the ZX Spectrum. Take control of Lala and apprentice switch and guide her through the dangerous game environment, locating keys to open up restricted areas so that you can find magic filters and chemicals. The 
Lala Prologue is a good looking game, but the faithfulness of the port means that we are subjected to a frustrating level design and a lack of weightiness of your main character, which means jumping from one platform to another proves to be an unrewarding experience. This is a very good port of a very average game. A game that we have reviewed previously, Let's Invade 2 is a spacing vital style game featuring 40 levels inside a 4 way scrolling void. Featuring some great melodic trance music all the way through, the standout feature of the game is the retina burning type pixelated graphics and the power ups available within the game. If your eyes can stand it, you'll find a quite a good shooter that is only marred by the lag in the shooting response when alien enemies are moving around at speed. The C64 gaming community certainly has a lot of respect for developer Sarah Jane Avery. And looking at what she has been able to achieve in producing Neutron within the 16 kilobyte limit, it's easy to see why. Neutron is a high quality vertical scrolling shooter featuring 9 stages containing over 18 different enemy types, each with their own attack patterns. When we reviewed the game back in May, we found it to provide a very satisfying shooter experience with its silky smooth scrolling, responsive controls and detailed chip characters. A good game that will benefit greatly with a 64 kilobyte release so that it can rival the likes of Aviator Arcade 2 when it comes to feature richness and variation in environmental backgrounds. But even as a 16 kilobyte game, there is no doubting that this is a great game. Featured as part of our recent June 2019 game roundup, Nono Pixie is a nonogram puzzle game with 100 unique puzzles to solve. Nono Pixie has turned out to be a great casual game that has had me hooked in recent weeks. For those that appreciate slower paced games then you will be pleasantly surprised by the addictiveness of the challenge on offer and the ability to play it in short bursts. A good game, but with limited target audience. The RGCD competition this year features a number of games that look basic upon first impressions but reveal themselves to provide rewarding gaming due to a good level game design. Other Inc. fits into this category as this platformer sees you navigate your square across various platforms on each level to reach the exit portal. Not only do you have to navigate your way across dangerous traps, but you also need to eliminate enemy shapes by bouncing on top of them before you can exit. Out of Ink is a must play for fans of the platform genre. Pocket Dungeon is a small dungeon fighting and exploration game that features hit points, experience points and levelling up. The objective of the game is to gather a relic and escape the dungeon. The simpleness of Pocket Dungeon's game design attracted me immediately to it, and it definitely has the potential to be a very good game. But for now, the game feels unfinished with its poor character movement and limited enemy types. One to watch out for if the developer wants to put more effort into it. Within moments of playing Relentless 64, you will be overcome with warm, fuzzy feelings as you realise that the game plays pretty much like the great horizontal shooters from the 80s. Relentless 64 is a port of the original Amstrad CPC game and features high speed non-stop score chasing action with some neat score chaining mechanics and different difficulty settings. Enemy waves at you come thick and fast and taking out an entire wave rewards you with an increasing score multiplier which resets back to one times should you miss a ship or crash.
Again, nothing necessarily new here, but what is on offer is of high quality. Also featured in our June 2019 game roundup, Robots Rumble sees you being sent to different planets guiding broken robots through various hazards into the lava pits below with the help of two big magnets. The magnets have limited battery charge, so you'll need to act quick. Robots Rumble is a somewhat fun puzzle game that is enhanced by some great music soundtracks and its high-res graphic style. Definitely worth taking a look at, and in my mind, this is the best of the digital monastery submissions. Well, the most fun and quirkiest game of the competition goes to Royal Hunt. Who doesn't love a naked C64 sprite character and a cute dancing boars with guns? The premise behind Royal Hunt is simple. Guide your naked character through 80 randomly generated locations while avoid being shot by the boars. Great job by the developer to provide something different than the standard shooter and platform game. Royal Hunt looks good, moves well, and is a lot of fun to play in short bursts. Space Orbs is a match three style puzzle game designed to be played with two players, but is highly playable as a single player experience controlling both player sides. The strength of the game is when you have to start thinking about switching orbs from one player to another in order to make the appropriate match. And this is what elevates the game for me to be the best puzzle game submission in this year's contest. Apparently this game is in preview mode featuring 32 waves, but sadly the developer has decided not to progress it any further. Shame about that. Sturcore XD is a horizontal shoot 'em up featuring some impressive large backgrounds and foreground graphics and some fast smooth scrolling. We featured the game in the June 2019 roundup video and found that while the game excels visually and sonically, it is let down with its lack of level design which resulted in a somewhat dull and unrewarding shooting experience. Super Gotron sees you take control of a blaster with the overall objective to simply destroy all enemies on screen. Upon initial looks, it seems it can only travel around the perimeter of the playing area. However, upon further investigation, you'll find that thrust can be applied to make your blaster move forward off the perimeter, and you can also teleport to the other side of the playing area by pushing down on the joystick. The game features power-ups and other collectibles and even features boss battles. There is a bit of depth to the gameplay on offer here as you progress through the levels. Super, Go Super Gochon is a highly addictive and one of my favourite submissions to the competition. Swarm is a real-time strategy game that purports to allow over 200 units to be controlled in real time. Your objective is to conquer the unknown areas of the galaxy, discovering new resources and the uses for them. As you attempt to take control of up to 8 asteroids, you will be competing and fighting against alien races. In playing Swarm for a couple of hours, I have to admit that I feel like I've only scratched the surface with the depth of gameplay on offer. The menu control mechanism takes a bit of getting used to, and at times my ships took a couple of seconds to respond to my commands. Despite following the instructions provided, I was not able to figure out how to select more than one ship at a time, which prevented me from fully experiencing the strategy game on offer. 
This is a game that I'll need to go back to explore further before I can make up my mind on it. Tenabre Macabre is a platform game with puzzle elements which differentiates itself by limiting the field of vision of each screen so that the majority of the game layout is in darkness. Finding a candle on each of the screens will result in the whole room lighting up. While exploring in the darkness, some respite is provided when a lightning strike briefly illuminates the room, allowing you to see the location of the candle and traps ahead. The ultimate aim of the game is for you to escape the crypt to safety. This is another port of a Mohan Twin ZX Spectrum game that is very faithful and features good looking graphics. Pity that the game also suffers from the lack of weightiness in your character and some parts of the game appear to be somewhat glitchy. Despite this, I still think it's quite a good game. Vegetables is a match 3 style puzzle game where you need to swap adjacent vegetables to form lines of 3 or more in a row. When you do this, 3 or more adjacent vegetables are destroyed and new vegetables drop in from the top. Every few moves, an immovable block will be dropped onto the playfield. There is no overall objective to the game other than to try and beat your previous score. You simply keep on playing until you have no more moves left. A good attempt at this style of puzzle game, but this is not for everyone. And there you have it, an impressive 20 submissions to this year's RGCD contest, all of which can be downloaded from the RGCD 16KB compo page on each.io. Judging is set to take place in the upcoming months with the results presumed to be announced later on this year. I hope you enjoyed our roundup of the RGCD entrants. If you haven't done so already, why don't you go on and try them all out.